All right, guys. Today we're going to talk about Travis Walton and his abduction that happened in Snowflake, Arizona in like the 70s, I want to say. It was I don't on wanna... November 5th, 1975. November 5th, 1975. Very good. Um, so this is the supposedly like the most reputable abduction story. Like, one of the most, but I, really, it's just, like, one of the first, I feel like, before, you know, modern technology came out. But anyways, um... Just sounds like those boys had hell of a party out there. Oh, whew. I actually did a video, like, discussing the Travis Walton abduction, and there are a lot of people out there who are, like, big Travis Walton supporters. I had no idea. Like, they really came for me, so... Um, I'm excited to do this video now and see what happens, but anyways, so this is kind of like part of our like otherworldly series, um, for Aaron in Wonderland YouTube. <laughs> Promote yourself out there. Tell them to go to the channel. Tell yeah, to to definitely channel. go to the channel. Um, I'm on YouTube. I have Aaron in Wonderland. So youtube.com slash Aaron in Wonderland. I also have an Instagram that's. Aaron in Wonderland YT. Put something here, Chris. And my Gmail. Right where my hand would be. My Gmail is Aaron in, Wonder, Aaron in Wonderland YT at gmail.com. So I'm Aaron. This is Joseph. Joe. Joey. Little baby kangaroo. <laughs> um, Christopher is our producer. My husband. Who I like. I like him a lot, guys. No, she does it. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so we're talking about the Travis Walton thing. Even though I have such a rager for true crime right now, like, I just want to talk about, like, all these, like, I've all I've been watching is, like, true crime documentaries and listening to podcasts, and I've been really obsessing over it. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to talk about Travis Walton today. Um, Joey just kind of, like, knows a little bit about him, um, so I wanted to kind of like get his opinion on different stuff. So anyways, yeah, I have the YouTube is Aaron in Wonderland or YouTube.com slash Aaron in Wonderland. We recently started a Patreon. So um, if you want to check out our website, it's Patreon.com slash Aaron we'll in Wonderland. Here. I'm sure that's what it is too. Slash Aaron in Wonderland. Just search, search for me on there. <sighs> we still have to set up the website a little bit more to get like the different tiers kind of like established and stuff but if you guys um can contribute even like a little bit you don't even have to subscribe to like the monthly thing even if you give like a dollar um that'll help us to be able to put more content out there uh, maybe like travel more places buy more Mountain Dew to fuel our game and fuel. Maybe, we'll be able to do more giveaways, too. I do a lot of giveaways on the channel. Maybe even get enough money so we can interview Travis Walton <gasps> ourselves face-to-face. -face. Oh, my God. Or, like, other people for, like, the true crime stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm literally – I'm just going to say it now because this is going to be the next podcast we're going to do. I'm obsessed with the Chris Watts murder. I shouldn't say it with, like, a smile on my face. I, of yeah, you seem too happy about it. Of the murder – I love the, the family, Chris Watts murder. Family annihilator Chris Watts. I don't know why. Well, because we live in Colorado and like it happened in Colorado and I don't know. I've been obsessing over it lately. So that's probably going to be our next thing. And I forget why I brought it up. Because you've just been so obsessed with Cause it. Because I've just been obsessed with Get it. Get back to the Travis Walton. So anyways, yeah. So we're going to talk about Travis Walton today. Oh, because oh, cause we're talking about interviewing. Because I actually went to a ufo festival in roswell new mexico there's we also made a video on that you can check out the youtube channel and um see what that's all about it's pretty interesting but i actually met travis walton and saw him speak and i think it would be cool to interview him like maybe we could like raise some funds up and be able to interview him um but the reason i brought up chris watts is because i'm pretty sure he's in jail in colorado so like maybe we could like write him a letter and like get in a phone interview with him or something like do something crazy like that would be so exciting you think but i'm sure do an interview i mean i don't know like maybe we send him like a Aaron in wonderland card and he's like checks it out and he'd be like intrigued you gotta appeal yeah, to people's probably, like. He'll probably use a hand clapper to watch your channel. <laughs> Where is the hand clap? I wish we had it. That needs to be like a part of this. So yeah. So, 
Anyways, Erin in Wonderland YouTube channel. Search it. Check me out. I would do live streams. I do a lot of giveaways. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see this QR code. Joe's holding up. It's on our water bottles and our cups here. Um, so yeah, check out the channel, subscribe to it. You could be entered in a lot of different giveaways if you watch the videos and comment and like and share them. Um, I'm just, we're just trying to get out there, you know, so help us out with the Patreon, check out the YouTube channel. And now I think we're going to get into just talking about the actual incident that happened. <clears throat> so what was the date that this happened, Joe? Uh, I think it was November it was, 5th, 1975. Yeah. It happened in the 70s. Yeah, November 5th, 1975. So, November 5th, 1975, um, Travis Walton and a crew of people, like mm -hmm. this crew of men who he worked with. How do you I'm, pronounce I want to tell you. Oh, oh, I was just saying, how do you pronounce where they were the working? The Apache Seagraves National Forest, which is in Arizona. Or is it in New Mexico? No, it's in Arizona, Snowflake. No, it's in Arizona. Whew. Near Snowflake, Arizona. Yeah. The, the facts check out on this one. His hometown, his hometown is Snowflake, Arizona, which, um, getting all over the place. This, okay, so November 5th, 19th, I'm going to set the scene for you here. Ready? Listen, no phones. So November 5th, 1970, Travis Walton and a whole crew of burly, logging, tight little men <laughs> just got off work. From logging all day. From hand clapping all day. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's been staying with us, and every night we hear him using his hand clapper. My hand clapper. <laughs> but did you see? That's why I was like, swat. Anyways, so Travis Walton, his hunky, delicious crew of men. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> in the 70s imagine these men in the 70s by the way because like i don't know if you ever looked at like i don't know how old you guys are like your parents or like grandparents yearbook and it, it's from like the 70s or the 80s they look and... nothing like that they look like lumberjacks back then i'm guessing oh my god Big old burly no lumberjacks. it's just funny because like everybody always looked so like ridiculous and old oh yeah but they like do even... they look like lumberjacks they have like mustaches this dude has had a mustache since he came out of the womb like let's pull up a picture of baby baby mustache walton <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah look there he is but, little, little baby <laughs> walton walking around oh my god okay so this got made into a movie by the way which is called fire in the sky so i'm totally not hitting on travis walton like i want him to have all the success in the world i feel bad Excuse if he's like me. traumatized from the encounter he had with these sexy aliens um <laughs> sexy aliens <laughs> yeah we'll get there but like is that your description or his the, it's definitely his maybe both I mean, you didn't personally see the aliens, so you can't. I didn't. You see cannot aliens. tell whether or not they were some sexy. Ass yeah, aliens. no, it, it's like his description. But the male, he was describing the male aliens, and it's not like he said they were sexy. It was like you could just like infer it from the description. Like he was like, oh, they had pecs that were gleaming in the moonlight, and like the I other we're, very. We're getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we're let's, okay. Let's Ooh, all right, bit. so we gotta just wheel sexy it back. Sexy aliens can, can make you. Run <laughs> I imagine on the video now it'd be like. 10 minutes later, <laughs> and then we're back on track. So, <sighs> basic story. So, the story was him and his friend. They're not friends, so also. That should be mentioned. So they're his, like, co-workers. The, the number of people, was it him and five other people? Or was he included? I think it was a five? crew of seven total. Okay, okay. So, but on the movie, they make it seem like there's only, like, five people i think total or something they like changed it so that was like a discrepancy from the movie to the thing but you know real life's always better than the movie or the right you know what I'm saying? i don't anyway. i don't know i saw i saw the a little clip from that movie the the syrup scene and i was like <laughs> oh he's getting loose you guys have to watch the youtube video that i made about it because we clip we chris cut in just a clip of the syrup scene that joe's talking about and that is not what you think it's going to be. Yeah, it's you like, that. you'll be like, how did this fit into an alien abduction movie? Like, what what part did this go after or before? Or what the hell? Like, what? <laughs> so that's pretty funny. All right, we're back in November 5th, 1975. 1970. Where a 
1970. What did I say? 1950. 1970. We're, we're 1975. 1970. We're, no, it's 75. Oh, 75? Yeah, I, mean, I swear it said 75. Yeah, 1975. November 5th, 1975. No, as I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> November 5th, 1975. So he's like, le- they had worked all day. They worked thinning the forest, mm-hmm. which I guess like they would cut down old trees for lumber or whatever and it was to help like facilitate the new trees to grow so they could they could grow big and strong strong so um yeah so they're essentially they're loggers like lumberjack dudes they're they worked all day they worked all day long and then they were driving home together in this pickup truck which was like a two row pickup truck which like i don't even know what kind of pickup truck if somebody knows what kind of pickup truck that is like it's a quad let me know because i don't know it just sounds weird maybe it was like an old bronco that you can like take the like no i'm guessing it was like a like a quad cab like what my truck is but dually wheels on the back it was the 70s though like what they had those back in the the 70s Hmm. i think fact checker i mean they were like kind of I don't want to say like rednecks, but like rednecky. So maybe they like made yeah, their own truck. Jacks. They were definitely rednecks. Dude, they were also young too. That's crazy. Like the oldest guy was like 28 and he was like, he was the boss. So anyways, they're leaving. We have not even began to scrape the surface of this story. So they were leaving their work site after working as lumberjacks all day and lumber Travises all day. And when they were driving through the Stygraves National Forest, they ended up saying that they all saw a like an orange light over like in the horizon. And so at first they were like, oh, maybe it's a forest fire because I guess they had helped to put out forest fires in the past. Or possibly the moon. Yeah, or even like the moon. They're like, oh, maybe this is the moon. I don't know. So then they ended up once they got like closer to it they realized that it wasn't any of these things and it was just some random um light in the sky so travis he's in a car with like six other dudes who are probably just like what the hell's that let's get out of here because they're in the middle of the woods they're not like on a road they're on like a logging path so he gets out of the car to go like scope out the scene and they all get freaked out and then he gets close to the craft he saw like a saucer craft that was like approximately a hundred yards or a hundred yards or a hundred feet uh i don't know i think it was a hundred feet because i remember hundred feet's pretty close. i remember saying like that is really close yeah so i think it was like a hundred feet away um they see this saucer flying there and he like gets out that's the point he gets out to investigate because he's like what the hell is this saucer so 110 he, feet away. 110 feet which is like nothing how close that is so close it says it's making high-pitched buzz like they were saying why would he even jump out of the car though he was just like, like do you think he was just like i don't know like what do you think you would do if you were working in the woods like that like uh, and then you were coming home i feel like if we were all riding in a car and like we saw, I feel like we'd slow down and look, but if I wouldn't get out of the car, like yeah. if I didn't know what, what it was. What would you think if like somebody did get out of the car? Like if I got out of the car, would you be like panicking? Like get back in, what the I'll hell tell are you, you doing? One thing, you'd be go, you'd be missing for five days, like Travis <laughs> Hall. I'd be driving <laughs> away. I'd be, in your me mouth. And Chris would be off in that race car. Oh, Boom. that's funny. Well, that's actually what happened. So he ends up getting out of the car and then getting like essentially like electrocuted, like a beam came out of this saucer. And then his friends say he was like, Wah! like got like electrocuted and then fell to the ground like a sack of potatoes. Uh, knocked him unconscious. Yeah, but they thought he was dead. They said it knocked him unconscious, but they thought he was dead. And they were like freaked the fuck out. So they were like, skirt, I'm out of here. Just like Joe said. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would just leave my friend, but how good of friends are you with a lumberjack? You know what I mean? We're just yeah, they, here they were working oh, no, together. You know what I mean? They I thought f- he was no, dead. You know what? Not thinking about it, they probably they were out in the middle of nowhere, so they probably had each other's backs like more than anything because there's no help around. Yeah. So it's even weirder that they just were like, "Let's get the hell oh out." Oh my of god, here. that's such a good point. That's such a good point because like when you're like in weird like working together it's every like day, well, no. and in super weird situations, almost like they're in like the military together or well, something. Yeah, the, well, like yeah, they're in a war zone the whole time because think they're chopping down trees we're and they're just preparing. constantly like falling down around them. Yeah. So you gotta keep your head up. Like, yeah, if yeah, something yeah. Falls wrong or that's such a good. point point yeah like they were like brothers yeah. so it makes it more <laughs> do you think what is- oh <laughs> it, it's worth mentioning too that 
he described the aliens as like classic gray aliens, which was like the tale as old as time. And he won a local radio contest for having the best abduction story. Like within like a few weeks of that, he won like five thousand dollars for having like the best UFO abduction story. Isn't it weird they have a contest for that? Who's yeah. like sponsoring? No, I don't know exactly what the contest was, but it was. And I don't know if it was like weirdest abduction, but I think it was like otherworldly type of like best story i i pictured them in the car like i, I feel like there's probably just one of them like the driver was just like he's dead guys we got to get out of here and everyone was like no 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 and then he was like yeah he's dead and then everyone was like yeah let's just go let's just go oh god yeah so apparently i guess after he was found so like in the days following Wal- travis walton claiming that he had been abducted and returned the National Enquirer awarded Walton and his co-workers a $5,000 cash prize for the best UFO case of the year. So I guess it wasn't a local radio contest. That kind of just seems like a weird coincidence, not like they were motivated by that, you know? Like, it just kind of happened after the fact. And also, well, I was going to say $5,000 yeah, $5, between... $5,000 in that day, back in the day. Well, between... But between all of them? All of them. Or is it $5,000 a piece? I think between all of them. Ah, then that's nothing. That's but really even good. still, like, that's that's a decent amount of money. Like, at least, like, $700 I a piece so or something. I guess so for them, too, how much they worked and everything, being out in the woods. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I'm not really sure if that was something that was already going on or that was just, like, a weird coincidence or maybe, like, they thought they could win it. But that seems like a stretch. Like, they're from Snowflake, Arizona. You think they're, like, thinking about, like, the National Enquirer contests? You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's weird. So, um, so yeah, so... Okay, so there's the story that his friends tell that, you oh, know, he's, me. like, electrocuted <laughs> and, like, falls to the ground. They think he's dead, so they just go. And then... Um, his friends end up like feeling bad when they get so far down the road and they're like, we have to see if he's okay. So they turn around and they come back when he, get, they come back, he's not there. <laughs> what do you think they were he's just at gone. I don't know. They, they said that they were like freaked out Is and this scared. A goof? Oh, and the saucer thing was gone. I don't know if they said they saw it fly away. I feel like they I said they, they saw did, it fly away. I think they did say they did like in that video last night that they, they were like, yeah, we thought we saw it fly away. So that's like a reason why they turned around to go back to check on it. They were like, Oh, it's gone. We should go oh, he's see. Gone. He'll be okay. Now. Is Travis dead? Poke him with a stick. See it's if he also moves. worth saying that Travis Walton, like, I don't know like what's true and what's not. It's not for me to like decide. That's between him and the Lord. But like, it seems like Travis Walton, was like very sincere when he said that he felt like the aliens took him because they didn't want to just leave him hurt like it was their obligation to like heal him and like it sounds crazy and really weird and far-fetched like why would the aliens even give a shit but like i don't know there was just something about the way he said it it just seemed so yeah like even he believed do you think the aliens thought like uh like what he said that they didn't want him getting too close so it like shocked him or whatever to like, keep him away from the ship i remember him saying something oh like yeah that. like it and like that, saved and then it was him. like it ended up being too much of a shock and then they probably saw the truck drive away and were like man his friends are dicks we should help them yeah 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 the aliens were just like way nice so um what else so many things so very many things all right well, let's go uh like while he was like away what like oh. those five guys ended up going what straight to the yeah. after that oh so yeah this is like the best part so that's just the beginning of this twisted tale right <laughs> so like that part you're like okay like that seems like just those six or seven guys out there maybe we're just like drinking too much and yeah maybe he fell or something and got out of there but it's weird they go what right to the show yeah so they literally these dudes that they go back travis walton is gone um I feel like we should both have fake mustaches on. <laughs> and then, like, cut, and it'll be like... <laughs> so, um... <laughs> the hand clapper the off, clapper. off camera. So, after they go back and he's not there, his co-workers, the people who's working with, immediately go to the police station or the sheriff, the sheriff's office. Yeah, I'm guessing more of the sheriff. And, like... I saw a documentary recently with the sheriff in it, and he seemed like a real <laughs> humble fella. You know, like, I don't know. It looks know. like he had Plus a big heart. old humble pie. Yeah, right like, he just ate a big slice of humble pie. 
Um, but it was very sweet, and he never brushed afterwards. <laughs> he looked like he was a Copenhagen man my, myself, or maybe I shouldn't go that. He was a I chewing man. I feel like his man. name was like Chuck Elderberry. Like I, feel, like, I feel like I just made that up. Chuck Elderberry. But I just feel like that was Like his Elderberry name. Pie? <laughs> like, is that why he said it? No. I mean, he was a plump I'm man. I'm going to Google what his name was. Let's see. Oh, you want me to see if there's something in Sheriff. Here? Travis Walton. Let's see who. Oh, that's right. The, uh... hmm. Oh, for that for for that thing for the five thousand dollar prize too, they had him do polygraph tests. Oh yeah. And they all passed. That was yeah. That one. was another thing. Chris, can you find out what the sheriff's name was? What Chuck Elderberry's real name was? Yeah, so was, uh... um. For the UFO, that was by the National Enquirer, uh, where a Warren Walton and his co-workers $5,000 for the prize for the best UFO case of the year. After they allegedly passed a polygraph test. Oh, yeah, the, the polygraph test. So that's like, I don't understand poly- Sheriff Marlon Gillespie. Oh, my God. That's Gillespie. It's not Chuck Elderberry. I don't know what the hell I was. Thinking. I don't know who. You should Google Chuck and Elder. see if that's a person. Yeah, look up Chuck Elderberry. I don't know who he is, but maybe our maybe our next uh, podcast will be about Chuck Elderberry. I bet you he's Elder an interesting Barry. man. It's like berry colored Chucks that came up because I'm on Bing. Chuck. Are you not using Elder Ask Elderberry? I'm on, I'm on Ask Jeeves now. That's more reliable. Chuck Taylor. A lot of elderberry chucks in there. Chuck Taylor. Yeah. But what was the guy? Galipsy? I bet he likes some elderberry (laughs) pie. (laughs) Marlon Jalipsy. Jalispy. Jalis pie. Ironically, the last three letters of his name are pie. All right, but. uh, Anyways, so they go straight to the sheriff. Marlon Jalispy. What'd you pie? And Hello, I'm Sheriff Gillespie. Hello, nice Sheriff Nice to Gillespie. meet you. What My happened to you boys out there? and sucked up by the UFO. <laughs> you boys been drinking? No. Been smoking that hashish? No. Well, what have you boys... I'm very skeptical of you two right now. Also, it's like the 70s, so like... You think they did acid? I have a lot of theories of what was going on in the woods, and we'll get to those, but... So, you guys should watch the movie. It's called Fire in the Sky. There's also a book that Travis Walton wrote called Fire in the Sky. Um, seems like a really go, cool dude. You can go to TravisWalton.com. And doesn't he have that website where you can actually like still buy the book? And, oh, yeah. Or is it on Facebook? Go to his Facebook and follow him on Facebook. Follow him on Facebook. Go to his website. Buy his book. Um, we can even link his TravisWalton.com link in the... <laughs> in the bio underneath what are you I, doing that but like we have no intentions i'm sure chris will edit like something there i hope he like edits joe's it. hand going I into hope a he edits it, like a penis me just holding a whole bunch of random penises or, we were or, just at, or, the, at, the, awesome, at the gas awesome station. guys swallowing some sausages <laughs> some sausages <laughs> puking them up whole we were just at a gas station where they had like this board where the community could write little post-its of things they were grateful about and I was like laughing and like put something up, and he was like, "You guys aren't drawing penises, are you?" Hey, <laughs> like, how about this? I'll we're say all the, like thirty years old. I'll say this on the first podcast. If if why didn't you say it on the first no, no, podcast? No, 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 no. Right now, I'm saying it right now. If if you on YouTube for your viewers and everything get up to what you already have, like what one point one right now, one mm-hmm. point two. If you guys get up to what's like a realistic number. I will I will swallow ten of those 2, sausages. Mm, no, that's like too soon. That's too soon. We we need like if you get up to five thousand. When you get up okay, to five thousand, okay. But we 000, need something in the meantime though, because five thousand no, no, no. is kind of a big dis- distance from now. Because we have like eleven hundred, maybe like thirteen hundred followers. If we get to if we get to five, when you get to five thousand, I'll do. I'll do the the sausage swallow, but like five or ten of them. I don't know how many I'll make. All right, but I'll well, make just a video to let everyone know that it's real, you should pop those headphones off. What? And show them what you can do on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. I'll, I'll save that for the end. That's how we'll end it. And then if you got when you guys get to twenty five hundred followers, how about I'll do. Uh, 
Well, it's you like suck, suck on little Vienna sausages. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the Vienna sausages. Well, no, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll think of something, and by the end of this, we'll think of something we could do once you guys get to. Yeah, we'll think of something. What would be something I, for some funny? reason? I just keep thinking of marshmallows, and like I don't know. You know what? I feel like I'll you say it right now. A if we get to twenty, up your butthole. If we get, if you get to, tw- as soon as you camera? get to, if you get to. Th- 2,500 or 3,000 viewers right in there, between there. I subscribers. Will do, yeah, subscribers, subscribers, not viewers, subscribers. Sorry about that. Uh, I will do the, the the sausage challenge, like five to ten of them. I, tens the 2, most. 2,500 to 3,000, what does that mean? As soon as we hit 2,500? Yeah, as soon as you hit 2,500 or 3,000. What like, do you mean, or 3,000? Like, whatever one's going to do first. it both? What do you mean, whatever no, comes first? 2,500 is going to come first. Well, 2,500 is going to come first, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if a lot of people start subscribing, once we get to 2,500, okay, we'll okay, okay, okay. Can we get, can we get like, a contract going? I'm we don't need no this contract. I, I have, my word is bond. Yeah, okay. I'll do it. 2,500. My word is bond. What, you guys need another, like, what, 1,400 viewers or 1,300 viewers? At 2,500 viewers. Oh, wait, subscribers. Subscribers. That's not that far away either. I do you want to do three thousand or five thousand? Because you're gonna have to swallow these hot dogs whole on camera. Yeah, this right. desk right here. You're right. Make it five thousand. Make it five thousand. Okay, 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 okay. And then you guys should put up videos of it on YouTube of like the other things. I. Like, this is what he's gonna do. I just Joseph Backer. <laughs> just put Joseph Backer. Joseph Backer. Will will swallow. S- will attempt. Yeah, we'll the hot dog have, I challenge. I have a weak stomach. Of <laughs> swallowing, I have a degree Five. in psychology, so I have written very many lab reports, and you have to be quite detailed. <laughs> 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 you have to define like everything. So, I Joseph Backer will attempt the hot dog challenge of swallowing. Five to ten. Five to ten. That's all I'm gonna make. Ten. Making. Ten is a lot. <laughs> that's, well, that's crazy. Well, that's what we're gonna attempt. Okay, we'll say we'll meet in the middle and say eight. Eight. I'll say five to ten. Because isn't there like eight in a package? How many is like in a package? Oh, uh, say a whole pack. How about a whole pack? Swallow. Eight. Oh, and don't, don't you say go. That. Don't you go. Don't you go. <laughs> a whole pack. Don't you go buy like a of like undisclosed a undisclosed amount. <laughs> no, no, of be eight. Like a seventy-eight pack. Yeah. Of hot dogs. Actually, I want you guys to order the one that's in the a the tub. Whole... I want you to order oh. the one that's in the tub. A swallowing a challenge of swallowing six hot dogs whole on camera while live streaming for uh, for our entertainment. Yep, I do it for the viewers. Signed this the fifth day of January in the year. 2020 of our Lord. Guys, I don't even think I'll be able to get one now. It's going to be a funny ass stream, I'll tell you that. Oh, here, I got to lead forward. Ah, oh, this is perfect. Huh. All right, let's get back to the Travis Walton. We'll deal with this later. Look who's trying to get out of this. I'm not going to get out of swallowing his pork swords. (laughs) 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 Oh, God. All right, but back to Travis Walton. Oh, I don't have the printer connected on here yet. So they went to the sheriff, and they told him what was up. And didn't they do what? It was like a five-day search looking for him. Four or five day search or three day search. Well, I just back and swallow the same time. What? Wait, what? Who cares? <laughs> print okay, it out, okay, Dropbox. Okay, okay, I'm going to print the PDF. And then save it to the Dropbox. <laughs> Honestly, when I was watching his videos earlier, I didn't even know how those people were swallowing. Sausages! Like, I saved it as sausages! <laughs> It's just like. Did you guys notice that they had like the extra like large ones that they were using? Ugh. (laughs) Live streaming for our entertainment. (laughs) 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 I feel like you're gonna have to cut this whole part out and use it as like the intro of the hot dogs challenge video. Back to Walton. 
back to Walton. Good idea. Right. I don't even remember where we were. Uh, we were at We got where, really off track there. I don't know how that he happened. Was talking, they were talking to the sheriff, and the sheriff was like, oh. The sheriff I, was like, I, I remember, don't know if I, I can remember, swallow 16 hot dogs whole. <laughs> I remember the sheriff said, I've ate 16 hot dogs whole. Like, like two bites. Two I bites. like them with relish. Um, <laughs> Not dipped in water for loo. Oh, you guys are going to see me throw up. On t- on camera. I don't know why you would agree to something like that. I I do it so you can you get your, your numbers up, <laughs> so you get your numbers up, man. Joey cares about the cause. I right. got respect for that. Right. And then if we get to ten thousand, I'll even think of it as something else to do. <laughs> Is that the printer? Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so yeah. So they go to up, the. I remember the 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 sheriff even said that. He was like, I got real close to them to make sure I didn't smell no booze or anything. On yeah, the, the sheriff was like convinced they were just nuts. He was like, okay, sure, sure. So the sheriff had them take him to the spot where it happened. No one was there. Then they just immediately started questioning them because they thought that they like beat him up or killed him in the woods. So. Yeah, the, the authorities thought he was murdered by his co Yeah, they thought they legit were, they, they were polygraphed as well because they were suspected of murder and the one one of the guys like Dallas or one of like one of their names like wouldn't submit to the polygraph test was just being real difficult because i suspect that he was like Dallas wasn't his real name maybe he was like didn't want to get caught for the other murders he did or something but so yeah they think they think these people are like suspects so um and then a like 5 day manhunt ensues oh my gosh is it still recording a five-day manhunt ensues. You shock yourself. <laughs> five-day manhunt ensues. And Travis Walton's nowhere to be found. Ow! They fine. even had dogs, Travis no Walton, footprints, the dogs nothing. Can't smell them. Just where his body dropped flat. Like a ton of potatoes, not a bricks. But a ton of potatoes and a ton of bricks weighs the same. Yeah. I have a pen. So well, for me to sign that. Bring it over here. Let me sign it. We're That'll be sign another right video. Now. We gotta stay on track. So <laughs> a search ensues, like a five day search. Um and in the movie he was like dating his boss's like daughter or like sister or something. I don't know. It was really confusing the dynamic, but um, he's still dating her, like, to this day. I'm pretty sure they're still married. Or... Ooh, who would marry a freak that got abducted by aliens? And possibly <laughs> probed. He has the secrets. Did you know that Fran Drescher thinks that she was abducted by aliens? And so was her, like, husband? And that that's how they, they have, like, Drescher? the same... Fran Drescher, you know, the nanny. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know, that's a whole story. Chris told me about it recently. But anyway, let's stay on the Travis Walton. Yeah, this is hard to like. Um. <laughs> Fran Dresser. Oh, and then she what? was abducted oh. by an alien. And then so they couldn't find him, and they even what? They looked for Travis Walton's uh, footprints. Nothing was going on. Footprints. They had like dogs, like like cadaver dogs, like out there hunting for him, like bloodhounds. What? They figured he was dead, and then so all then of a sudden, where did he reappear? They at? thought he was dead, and then. It was his brother that just got, like, a call in the middle of the night, and he was at, like, some payphone somewhere at, like, a gas station. So they went and picked him up. In the movie, he was naked. I don't know if he was naked or not. I mean, I don't know. He never disclosed those details. No. And I like bet I you said, those sexy aliens had him naked. Oh, man. Oh, but, so then they ended up finding him, and then what did he say? He ended up saying that... He said he, like, didn't remember anything. But then... Well, didn't he say he actually remembers that he, like, woke up in, like, a hospital-looking room? Yeah, so, like, I feel like initially he was like, oh, I don't, I'm, like, gone for five days. And then he starts to remember, and he says that he, yeah, like, remembers waking up in, like, a hospital type of room, and there were two, like, gray aliens, like, around him. And um, that he was, like, freaked out, so then he jumped off the table and tried to, like, beat him up with, like, a glass cylinder, Um, I assume that this was his glass, um, sex toy from the orgy that was happening in the woods prior to him being abducted. (laughs) His hand clapper. He was like, oh, yeah, use that hand clapper. Ideal, ideal placement of the hand clapper. But, 
don't know. It was like a cylinder. He said it was like a glass cylinder, and he like tried to hit him with it, but it broke. And then there was like a struggle, and then they ran away. So then he ran away. And whenever he got out, and then a human like, with a helmet came on and led me to another room. Yeah, and then like a human person, like a human-looking person, which he thinks was an alien that like made itself look like a human, transformer style, I guess, to make him feel comfortable. Um, I guess more chameleon style than transformer style. So, but yeah, he said that this alien led him into like another room where there was like other aliens and. Th- this is like this part I actually went off kind of in my other video and I think this is where people were upset about but I'm going to do it. So, uh he describes like cuz there was female and male human looking creatures that were aliens he like deduced after the fact, but he's like there was a woman and she looked like a woman and then he was like and the men <laughs> they were statuesque. They had pecs and perfectly symmetrical abdominal muscles and pelvises that look like they could thrust for days. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe not exactly those deep. words. I think I'm paraphrasing, but he really <laughs> was like stressing how like hot the man aliens were. And then he was like, like yeah, what about yeah, yeah. The, women? The, the women look like women. That's fine. The, yeah, they got hair like and women. stuff. And I guess they had a boot. Uh, all the women look like Beyonce. They were all right. They were fine. <laughs> so, yeah, so he spent this time with these sexy aliens. Who knows what kind of freaky shit they were doing in that spaceship. He probably never wanted to leave. <sighs> right? Like, Travis, get out of here. We're done with you. I it's know. Sex He's toy. like, where's that glass cylinder? <laughs> Not again. Oh, no. <laughs> so actually, this past, I don't even know when it was, maybe like October or something, we went to a UFO festival in Roswell, New Mexico, which, by the way, was like, Joe actually did not come with us. It was Christopher and I. But it was a weird town. Like, when I think of Roswell, I think of, like, the middle of nowhere and, like, a big crater in the ground and, like, everyone obsessed with aliens. But it just looked like a normal normal town. Like, just like a downtown that had, like, a McDonald's and a Subway and, uh... But certain things were, like, alien-themed, but... For it being, like, none of the hotels, like, you know how hotel marquees always have, like, clever advertisements? Even Chris said, like, that week was the Alien Festival and all the hotels were sold out and none of them had any, like, like cheeky alien jokes, <laughs> you know? Hey, like when you got the aliens, you don't got to advertise it. I guess that's a good point, you know? But if you got to flaunt a baby, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyways, we ended up finding out that um, the Roswell crash didn't even happen in Roswell. It happened... Nobody even really knows where. Like right outside. Yeah, nobody knows exactly where, but that's for another time. But so we met. I met Travis Walton. So did Chris. We met him in Roswell after watching him speak. Um, I actually have a photo with him, which I'm sure we'll clip in here. But, uh, or you guys can check online. It's a good photo. Oh, it's so good. But you know the weirdest thing, though? Okay, I don't know if we should go off here yet. Let me just speak about a few more things. So, Travis Walton is from Snowflake, Arizona. And there's literally, like, one main road in Snowflake, Arizona. It's called Paper Mill Road. And he works at this paper mill in Snowflake, Arizona. I don't know if he still works there now, if he's retired. But he's actually in charge of sweeping up all of the tiny scraps of paper and selling them as confetti. Which is a job that's, like, overlooked a lot of time, you know? But... Like, how old is he even right now? I don't know. He's only 66. Oh, wow. He's 66. He looks a lot. I thought he was going to be, like, a lot older than that. He looks alive for no his No offense, age. Travis Walton, if you're watching this. <laughs> this is awkward And now. it's like... This is awkward. So Sorry, I Travis. I know it seems dumb, but... I know you're going to be listening and watching this, so... For sure. He's a good guy. Because without him, the world would not know the joy of confetti. You know? Confetti? Yeah. A little paper that he's in charge of. So anyways, uh, <laughs> he's actually, big, he was actually like a very job. complex man. Like, like he had this alien abduction story. Who knows, like, if it's true or not. He doesn't seem that crazy. Like, he doesn't. Like, he's very, like, like, he's not some, I think that's why he he's so, like believed and stuff like reputable because he doesn't seem like some whack job um 
does look like the Marlboro Man in the 1970s, though. Like, if you look at his picture from back then, he was, like, very, like, denim everything, big mustache, like, cigarette. So, he actually, I don't know if I mentioned this, but he lives in Snowflake, which is a, apparently a Mormon town, and he's a Mormon, which, like, I don't know how that factors into the aliens. Like, I'm not exactly sure what, like, Mormons believe or anything. But I just thought that I, was kind of interesting because I did not know that about him. Well, what I think is so crazy about the whole thing is there was seven of the guys, including him, and six of the other guys, not accountant Travis Walton, all have, like, stuck to their story for this long. They haven't even, when they were offered money and stuff. To, yeah, that's to the thing, too. And then the it. polygraph thing that I kind of touched on earlier, it's like, they all passed polygraph tests, but it was in the 70s. And also, too, why would they, like, in the 70s, I feel like, why would they just keep up the hoax, like, like for so long? Like, there's no point to well, it. Because the they, didn't make, they didn't make any money off of well, it. Well, his well, friends well, didn't make as did. much money. Like, I'm sure they still made money. They were, like, in a movie. Like, their likeness is in a movie. I guess Travis Walton's still making money off Oh, of yeah. Today. He's still talking at, at festivals to this day. And that is, like, one of my points, like, that I had wanted to touch on is that, like, He's very believable, and who knows what the truth is, you know? Like, something happened. Something weird happened. But he's been getting money from this his whole life. Like, this happened when he was, like, 20 years old or, like, 19 years like, old. And this think... dude is 66 right now. So he has been getting money. He made this movie. He has this book. He does public speaking. I want to pay him for an interview. What's up, Travis Walton? Let's talk. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, like, like, I want to believe. <laughs> but do you really think... Do you really think that they were like, not that they were like smart enough, but out in the woods, do you think they were like, you know what, guys, instead of cut these logs down, let's act like a, one of us got abducted by a UFO. And well, makes maybe some money. like, maybe it's literally like Travis Walton is the only one who knows, and like his brother like had him somewhere, oh, you know, like and then he was, was like, the oh, one he out called there with me. The light. Yeah. Like just had a bright light out there. Well, I I don't know about that. Like they said that area was the highest area in the continental US for lightning strikes. So it's possible he just got like struck by lightning when he got out of the car. But what would describe all them uh, seeing the UFO? Because they all describe the UFO. Yeah, see that I don't know. Like that I can't explain. But it'd be it'd be different if they didn't just see a ball of light. It'd be like it'd be different if they're like we we're just driving down and all of a sudden there was like a a, a ball of light came down. Travis was out of the car and then and like yeah, we went that's on. a really good point. I like, mean, for them all to see the spaceship, either like Travis Walton really went deep into the hoax and his brother helped them like create a craft and just put like a bright light behind it that you could sort of see like what it looked like. Yeah, you have to like premeditate like, like all of that. Like right, like yeah, all of it. Like, cause what are the odds that they don't leave work earlier? They stay later, or or uh, I don't know. I, but honestly, Joe, if I had something that was making me money my whole life, I would never give that up. But, but, but still, if I was one how, of the dudes, sure. if I was one of the dudes though who was lying, like lying, and I saw like this other dude getting rich over it, like I would be super. I would imagine they would be like super jealous and be like, know, "He's lying." How do you know Travis Walton isn't giving him money under the table? How much money is this dude really making though? But also too, like what. Were people, were there even any cases back in the day of people making money off of their their stories, like a sustainable of living back then? Like why no. would he even like? I would, don't think that he knew it was going to be what it was. I think like he wanted like five minutes of fame or like to play a joke on like his small town of yeah. Snowflake, what if he just like Arizona. played a joke and then he went and he's like hiding in the woods. They come back. He's like, holy shit, they got the sheriff. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, the dogs are here. I gotta hide and then turn up and make up a story. Like, who knows? Something that's interesting, though, is that he went on uh, the game show, The Moment of uh, Truth. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, but I mean, like... It's one, it's a game show, it's on TV, and, like, they were doing... They were offering him money, though. They were, like, 10000 or $100,000 to answer this even... question. Let me explain. They asked him, um, were you really abducted that day in 1975? And he was like, yes, I was. And then they were like, that is false. It was like he was hooked up to a lie detector test. And the whole audience well, I think was like, it was just a voice. I think they just did a voice test. It no, like a... they had done a lie detector test like the day prior. Uh, and they he was just like there with like the results. Answering. Yeah. So I don't know. Didn't he pass all the other questions that they asked him or whatever? Yeah, but they didn't have to do with his yeah, abduction. Like abduction. But so, yeah, so... I met him at the UFO festival in Roswell and I mentioned he was a Mormon because he played this video at the end of 
his presentation. Like, he talked about, you know, his abduction and what had happened and thing like, how his life has been since. And then he, like, he said that it would be, like, selfish and stupid to think that we were the only people out there, you know, which I felt, like, was really, like, deep and cool. And then he played this video that was, like, there's a million stars, and there was, like, really cool music, and it was, like, this weird thing, and I don't think people were really into it. They were, like, leaving, and he shut it off and seemed kind of, like, sad, but I thought it was really cool, like, and I just think he's, like, a really deep person. Like, I, I, I'm really, like, intrigued. So I guess now I'll talk about the fact that I took a photo with him when I met him, and like we had like kind of like hugged like he was like here like let's like reenact like the picture was like this like but he had me like wedged under there and he felt almost like an alien in human skin like what he felt too bony to you i don't know it like i don't know what an alien in human skin would feel like but if i were to like imagine that's what it felt like so do you think that, and like do you think the aliens really abducted him and then just took him and wore him like a skin suit like in men in black like i just need some sugar that's water exactly what i thought of the sugar water guy but um that's all he drank i don't know it's hard to say like like did he ever come back like what did they do to him out there like oh and also his eyes were like like if he would like blink it was like like, I don't know how to explain it. It was, like, lizardy. Like, he had, like, lizardy eyes. So, I don't know. So, you're telling me he's an alien. Mm-hmm. There's only one way to know. His Travis Walton, we need you to come on here. Talk to us. <laughs> Travis Walton, if you're not an alien. So, if Travis you're not Walton, an alien, if you, you are an alien. Don't come and talk to us. I if think you it's possible. Are an alien. If he is an alien, though, that syrup is his kryptonite. Yeah, like what if that was like the thing? He'd like explode if he like touched it or ah! came near it. Um, yeah. So that was a lot that we covered. Uh, this is just like one of our many like otherworldly things. So, what do you think of the whole thing? Like, do you think that? he was abducted that day like what do you think i know you think it's weird that his friends all stuck to their story uh i don't know from how all the people are and everything like for all of his friends and all that not even to like get a little greedy for themselves and try to strike out or even say that it like wasn't real or anything makes me believe that something really happened to him out in the woods Mm -hmm. and for how calm and everything he is about it it's like very strange so i don't even know like well he's told the story a million times i know that but i would love to like have videos of him talking before he was abducted and that and seeing if he still has like the same he was like 20 years old i feel like he would be like watch me shoot this no, uh, no, I, no, I just mean not, not like that. Just like to see his demeanor and the way he talked. Cause like, he's just like way too calm about it. The way he talks about it and seems it's been about like it. 50 years. No, but even in the videos where they showed him like, like you know, sitting on his couch and they were interviewing him, he was just like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah I was that abducted. One. But he seemed like when, when we saw him talk in person, he seemed like, like an alien. Confused, like genuinely still confused to this day. Like what happened that day? I don't know. And he brought up like scientific evidence. Like he was like the trees in that area oh, yeah, grew, grew like exponentially faster, on the one side. Where, like above where the, like, like around in a circle. Yeah, like the, allegedly like where the craft was because of like radiation, radiation or something. And I don't know, maybe there's another reason for that, but... He just seems, weird. like, absolutely obsessed with it. But like I said, if I had something that was making me money forever, I would for sure be riding that gravy train. <laughs> um, what else, though? Moment of truth. Felt like an alien in human skin. Yeah. Mountain Dew. Give us a sponsorship. Do you have any kids? Yeah, I think he does. Or his kids look alien-like? Oh, oh you know question. what I wonder? I wonder Chuck Elderberry is did, still up on my search. You know what I wonder? Did they do any tests on his kids to see if his like their DNA or like chromosomes <gasps> were anything different? Oh my god, Joe. That's genius. I don't think that they did. Who would have thought of that? You know? Like we need Travis Walton. We need your spit in a Walton. tube. Not even that. We need your we need your your son and our daughter's spit in a tube. Aw, he's such a nice guy. What is this? Who would agree to this? 
5,000 subscribers. I, Jizz of Backer, will attempt a, the hot dog challenge to swallow six hot dogs whole on camera while live streaming for entertainment. I never agreed to this. Okay, so I'll sign in one of the Wait, lines. Sign this the as a fifth witness. day of January in the year 2020 of our Lord. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. Because it's you about hot dogs. I've never seen swallowing hot dogs in our Lord on the same paper. The Lord shall be with me that day. And also with you. Okay, so it says at 5,000 subscribers, I, Joseph Packer, will attempt the hot dog challenge of swallowing six hot dogs full on camera while live streaming for our entertainment. This day, January 5th, 2020. Day of our Lord. I'm going to literally write witness under my name because I don't want anyone to be like, oh, you signed that you would do it too. <laughs> only. <laughs> witness only. <laughs> That counts for both of them. <laughs> I'm going to write participant under yours. I don't know if I spelled that right. Yeah, Participant. Participant. <laughs> Participant. All right. E-D. Erectile dysfunction, baby. All right. But there ain't nothing wrong with this dude. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it. So we signed it. I signed it for the so, swallowing. Um, swallowing the pork swords. <laughs> That's the funniest way. So to put it. I know it really is. I was like so gross. So send us an email for anything else that you think that we should cover. Um, we're definitely gonna start doing like true crime stuff. Um, I love like alien and otherworldly stuff too. So anything that you want us to cover as far as that goes, um, send us an email. Let us know. Uh, what do you think about the Travis Walton thing too? Like, do you think he was abducted that day? Do you think him and his friends are keeping this charade up together? Um, so yeah, so check out our Patreon. It's Aaron in Wonderland. We have a YouTube, we have a Patreon, we have an Instagram. We're all over. I have Facebook too, which I have not been using. Maybe we should get a Twitter. But yeah, check me out, Aaron in Wonderland. Um, Twitter, and Twitter, remember Twitter. to stay weird. But Twitter, 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 Twitter. You should, um, do you know why we should stay weird? Because the truth is out there. <gasps> Because the truth is out there.